Welcome to this video, which is all about um, restoring the D110. This is the unit that's sitting underneath the computer beside me. Um, again, this was a viewer's question, so somebody asked, how do you do this? I've had several questions around uh, the D110, the U110, and I'm going to try and address those over, over coming weeks. Anyway, this will be a series of two videos. Okay, this is video one. This will be about backing up. Video two will be about restoring. For both the backup and restore, you're going to need a few bits. First, you're going to need a computer. It doesn't matter whether it's a Mac or whether it's a Windows machine, but you're still going to need a computer. Um, and I'm going to be honest here, I always use a uh, this is a Windows 10 machine. I always use Windows and I use a program called MidiOX. Um, some people use BOEM, um, but I don't use BOEM, I use MidiOX. So that's what this is gonna be based on. It's gonna be based on a Windows 10 machine with MidiOX. The second thing you need is one of these things, which is your MIDI interface. And I've said this many times on the channel before, um, I don't use the interface that's in the rack, which is my big interface for when the studio is up and running. I always use this little diddly interface here, which is just a simple two in, two out. Uh, this is a MIDI man uh, from M Audio, but any one of these sort of uh, relatively cheap, I say cheap, I can't remember how much this was, 30 pounds, something like that. Anyway, any one of these uh, relatively cheap, but stable MIDI interfaces. And the reason why I use this smaller interface is because I find it easier to address when you've got a device that's quite chatty. And a lot of these older synths, um, when you leave them on their own, are actually quite chatty. So there's, there's stuff that's coming down um, from the machine all the time. The DX7 is a real classic example of that. Um, so you need one of those. Next thing you need, USB cable to plug it in. And then you need at least one, there are two here, but one five pinned in MIDI cable. So this is the old stuff, okay? Um, because there's no USB port on this. Okay, simple as that. So in terms of wiring this up, let me move the camera angle and then we'll wire it up. Okay, wiring the um, unit up, start with the MIDI side of it. Uh, as I said, two MIDI cables that I have in my hand. Just let me undo the wires, like so. And as always, I get two ends of the same side. There you go. Okay. So, in order to wire up, you see cables flying around in front of the screen here. So, there you go, either end of the MIDI cable. This is going to be the out from the device, so we plug that into three USB sockets here. We plug that one into the out, and therefore because it comes out of the out of the device, it must go into the in on the interface. Now I've said before when you've seen this interface, the out and the in on the A channel on opposite sides actually makes it really easy to remember which way around you're going. Um, the second one is obviously we want to take the in from the computer because I'm going to do both in one hit uh, in terms of video in, so I want both sides connected. And that has to come out of the out A, which happens to be this socket on the other side of the interface. So we have the interface all set up and running. Then we need to plug in the computer. Now the computer's round the other way, just purely because it's on top of the the unit and I turn the unit around so I can film the connections um, and the square end which is a USB B socket goes into this socket on the back of the device like so and then the A socket goes into a USB socket on the machine itself. Now what you can see is the there's the interface uh, just negotiated with the machine. It's classless, this particular interface, and I don't know whether you heard the machine go bing, bing, bing. That means the machine has recognized the interface. So we're all good to go from a MIDI perspective to either backup or restore.
Okay, this is the part of the video where we do the channel self-promotion. So if you want to skip past this bit, fast forward now. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like uh, videos about the sort of stuff that's in this video, hit the subscribe icon. Save yourself some time, hit the bell icon as well because then you'll be notified every time new content hits the channel. If you like the content of the video, please give it a thumbs up. Really helps with the old YouTube algorithm -y thingy. Um, also, leave comments down below. I read all the comments, I respond to all the comments, and sometimes, like this video, I make videos about those comments. Um, down there somewhere also is the TMTG community. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, sponsor the production of videos and keep the channel rocking. And finally, down there also are the uh, Instagram and Facebook feeds. That's where all the channel notices will appear. So now back to this particular video. I'm hoping that you guys can see this on video because the backlight on this unit has gone. So I'm kind of don't want to shine a light on it because if I shine a light on it, then what actually happens is it just reflects back and you see even less of it. Anyway, first thing we need to do is set the D110 to transmit uh, MIDI. So what we need to do is we need to go into the relevant menu and we do that by going right and copy. And then we use these group buttons to select dump one way. There is two dump options. There's this dump handshake and dump one way. We only want dump one way. The dump handshake was a, uh, a method that Roland employed where it was actually sending back uh, handshake uh, bits back to the unit to confirm things have been done. Um, the problem is that a lot of them, sh a lot of um, SysX, especially things like the Mac for arguments, like won't transmit that back. Um, so what we want to do is just set it up to dump one way. The next thing we want to do is set up what we want to dump. So at the moment it says dump sound and we've got the option of rhythm or we've got the option of all. Now we want to back this unit up so we're going to do a dump all. And then we press enter and at this point we stop and move to the computer. Okay, MIDI OX is already open on screen and we need to get in to set up the parameters for the D110. And we do that by navigating to the view menu. We click that and we select the SysX option. And we'll just move that over there. And then we need to get into the actual setup. So we go SysX and configure. Move that out of the way as well. And then what we need to do is we need to set up the parameters. So this has configure for inputs and outputs. So we're just going to concentrate on the inputs and the inputs for uh, this device are 512 buffers or 512 bytes uh, received and number 17 which is the Roland SysX ID number. In terms of the other options here, output timing, the only one we click is the delay after F7 and set at 60 milliseconds and show F0 to F7 in color text is the other option we select here. So that's all we need to change here. Then we go OK. And the machine is now set up to receive SysX. So in order to receive SysX, we go back into the SysX menu here and we click receive manual dump. And as you can see, it is now waiting for us to hit the button. Now we've left the D110 in the position of it's ready to transmit. So in order to transmit, all we need to do here is just press enter. Sorry, all we need to do here is just press write and copy. And as you can see on the screen, you've got the data coming in to the machine and the bytes are counting up. Okay, 
The bytes have now stopped, as you can see, the 26960. That means this has transmitted, the, the D110 has transmitted everything to the computer. So now what we need to do is look at the screen. You can see the screen has now gone back to a base screen, which is good. And on the computer here, what we do is we click, click done and the data is now displayed here. And what is left is effectively to save that off. So I'm gonna click save as, so it's display window and then save as, and up will come my save as. Now you can see I did this a couple of days ago. So I'm just gonna take that and I am just going to just rename the file so that we can see which one I did today. And that is the backup procedure for the D110. So we've now backed this machine up. It's, we've got a SysX uh, version of the configuration and the sounds or the patches, and we can restore that at any point in the future.